Welcome back to another Dimitri's Garage. Today we're going to be doing brake pads and a brake flush on this 240SX behind me. Now that is my 1996 S14. You can learn a little more about this car from the video up top. Brake pads are one of the easiest jobs any home mechanic can do. It doesn't require you getting under the car, just popping the wheels off and lifting the vehicle. Brakes are the very first thing I learned how to do on my car when I was a teenager. My stepfather showed me how to do it on my, at the time, 1992 Chevy Lumina, which somehow needed brake pads way too often. It might have had something to do with the way I was driving. You're definitely going to need brake fluid. You're definitely going to need brake pads. You're gonna need some method of taking the lug nuts off. I'm using this impact gun. You're also gonna need something to bleed the brakes with. This is a one-man bleeder. You can use just that, but I also like to use a pressure pump. That pump there is gonna pressurize the master cylinder and let me much more easily bleed the braking system without having to get in and out of the car. Now you don't have to have all that. You could just use this little guy. Now you could use a socket set to do this. You could also use these wrenches. I use this to push the pistons apart. I uh, actually use this little guy here to turn in the rear brake pistons. I do recommend having some wire. Uh, I use this to hang the calipers. Some brake cleaner also helps scrubbing bolts. Some screwdrivers to ply with. If you're gonna measure your rotor thickness, this is the right tool to have. We're also gonna use my ultrasonic cleaner to get the parts nice and clean that we're gonna reuse. It's already prepped and ready to go. If you wanna learn more about these things, there is a video up top that I did that explains this unit. Let's go ahead and take off our lug nuts. Got a rotor, looks pretty smooth. Got our caliper and our brake pads, and the brake pads look like OEM Nissan green ones. So we're gonna start with a 14 millimeter socket and we're gonna throw it on the back of the bolt right here that holds the caliper to the knuckle bracket. Ooh. We take this bolt out and we save it so that we can wash it. Then there's a second bolt right here in the bottom. We're gonna do much the same thing. Now we're not gonna take that bolt all the way out. Instead, what we're gonna do is swing this open. We're gonna take that wire. Now we take the bottom bolt all the way off and loosen this really carefully. You know, we could put it up here somewhere. It just holds it in place. It makes it really easy to work with. See, it just, it just stays in place now. So at this point, we can start taking some of this equipment apart. In the back here is a little bracket. I'm gonna save that. What else is here? So this one sits in front of the other, and it actually sits between the pad and that other clip that sits in front of the piston, so it's kind of two plates. Pretty interesting design. This is where a little screwdriver or pry bar can come in handy. So we got this pad out and it does look to be a uh, Nissan OEM pad. Actually still in pretty good shape, but it's very dusty. Pick these clips up. And there we go guys, we are ready for new pads. Now reading the manual, it says that the rotors should be a minimum of 18 millimeters thick. We should test that to make sure we don't need new rotors. We're right at about 20 and a half mil. All right, we're now at the back and we're gonna go ahead and take the wheels off. All right, we're gonna pop the wheel off. We got our little baby caliper. Here we have our 14 millimeter socket again. Same deal, put it back here. This one should be a little easier. Let's break the bottom one as well. I'm gonna start to move this around. Now this has got a giant uh, handbrake cable attached to it. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's okay to just kind of leave it to the side. Little front plate, little brake pad. Again, looks Nissan OEM. Looks like it's still got a ton of meat on it. But again, I don't like the dusting and the squeaking. Another clip that sits in the back around the pad. Bust out the little screwdriver and give things a couple of little wax. And two more clips that sit 
at the top and bottom of the pad. Before getting started, it is a good idea to measure the rotor thickness. So in our case, the rotor thickness is 9.23 millimeter and eight is the minimal thickness. Let's go take this stuff and throw it inside of our ultrasonic machine. So we've got our ultrasonic hot water bath. It's about 130 degrees in there. Set this for an hour. After even just a couple of minutes, this bolt looks almost new already. That water gets dirty fast. All right, with the cover on, we're gonna let this thing run for an hour, come back to nice and clean parts. All right, the bath is done and the temperature has actually gone up. The cavitation from the ultrasonic cleaning actually raises the temperature too. We're gonna start draining the bath. You can see just how nice and clean everything got. All right, here comes some more water. Now, as you guys can see, this hardware is like new now. There's really no problems with the hardware that I could see. Now, one thing we need to do is open this reservoir for the brake fluid. Try not to get any crud in there. We keep that open when we push the pistons back. It's very important that you put a towel or you drain some of the fluid, disengaging the piston to put bigger brake pads in will cause the level to overflow. So throw a towel in there or remove some of the fluid. Now before installing new pads, it's very important that this piston is rotated inward using some pliers. Basically you go in these holes and you turn it and that'll cause the level of the brake fluid to go up in the reservoir that we just opened. But it'll also allow the new pads that haven't been worn down to clear. You also wanna make sure the boot around the piston isn't getting caught. Straighten it out if it is and of course check for rips. You may need to rebuild the caliper. Now we're gonna to need to place these retaining clips up top and on the bottom. So we're gonna start with the outside pad, which is this one. Essentially, you're trying to get these little ears into the channel here. And guys, this is a frustrating thing to do. This sometimes throws people off. Now you take your rear brake pad and you apply lubricant to the back just like that and smear it around. So we're gonna apply some of this grease to the outside pad. We're gonna apply the front shim. There we go, that's the front shim in. So we've applied the grease to the back pad. We're gonna apply the back shim. There's little, little tabs that clip it on. Once it's nice and snug, we take that pad and we put it in the back here. It's not always the easiest to get this thing to play ball. Yep, there we go. Now we have to see if we need to adjust the piston anymore. It's not wanting to go back on. So we need to move the piston inboard a little more. And I think that's gonna go on like a glove. So before we fit it on, one thing that I'd like to do I like to check the condition of these guys, the little pens, and these are great. They're lubricated. Um, everything seems fine. I'm gonna pull the bottom one out. Same deal. It's lubricated, the boot's not cracked. Nothing to worry about. Now we can slide this guy back in place. We're gonna grab some of our 14 mil bolts. You want them to catch and get threaded into the pen that we just checked. Perfect. Now these bag bolts are 31 foot-pounds of torque, which is what we've got my wrench set to. Let's see, we did 30.8, that's perfectly fine. And we did 31 flat, so that's great. Now we are gonna bleed these, but let's install the front pads first get the whole car situated with new pads, and then I will show you the bleeding procedure. We wanna push the piston inboard so that we can clear the new pads. This is where this nifty tool comes in. It basically clamps in and then pushes on the old brake pad. I've just simply placed the old brake pad in here in such a way as to not damage the piston. It might be a little difficult to see, but I'm basically pushing the piston in. 
Don't push once it gets to a tight spot. It's probably all the way open. Now we want to get our pads in here. We're gonna take a pair of clips and put them into the bracket. They really pretty much just go one way. Now again, the sensor goes in the back and the regular flat one goes in the front. So let's put the front one in first. It's the easier one. Now we're gonna take the back pad and do the same thing. Now we fit the inner shim and then we grab the outer shim. Sometimes these can be a little bit of a pain. All right, we've got the outer shim cover on. We're gonna untie the caliper. So now we take our untied caliper. Now we can grab two of the bolts. We're gonna thread that on into the sliding pen. Now for these bolts, the torque rating is the same. It's gonna be 31. All right, so to get our bleeding started, the first thing I wanna do is reduce the amount of fluid in the reservoir. I'm gonna use the pliers after cleaning them off to pull up very gently this little stopper thing. Now I have a pump that lets me take some of the fluid out, but there's a lot of different ways you could do this. Some people choose to run the fluid all the way through the line instead. You know, other people use a turkey baster. There's a million ways to do this, so this is just the way that I'm gonna do it. We're gonna top the power bleeder up. All right, pop the pump back in, and then we're gonna pop the cap on. There we go. So the trick now is to pump it up a little and make sure we don't get any leaks. We're gonna wanna go to about 10 PSI to start. So I have this unit right at 10 PSI. We're gonna watch it and make sure it stays there for a bit. So it's been about 10 minutes and as you can see the pressure is right at 10 PSI, we're doing great. Let's pump this thing up to about 20. So what this handy system is gonna do is supply a steady stream of brake fluid to our master cylinder. And it's gonna supply the pedal pressure that you'd normally do by sitting in the car. So all we'll have to do is open and close the banjos on the calipers. We are now at the back right wheel, which is the farthest from the master cylinder. There's a little R up here telling us that. And this is where we wanna start bleeding. We wanna do the rear right, the rear left, the front right, then the front left. That is the correct order. So first we remove the little, the little cap, pop this hose onto the banjo back here. So we get our little 10 millimeter wrench in there and we pop the banjo open and we should see fluid start to come through. There's no bubbles and it looks clear, which is a good sign. I just don't know how old the fluid is. Over here on this side, we're gonna monitor the master cylinder level and the pressure up here. The goal is to get quite a bit of this fluid to circulate. We're gonna close that. We're gonna take the cap off back here Go ahead and open the banjo. Ooh, we got bubbles. Yeah, so that one definitely needed to be bled. Like right now, I'm not able to lock the wheels up on this car when I slam on the brake. All right, I think we got this one filled up. We're gonna close off the banjo. It's not very much torque, just a little bit. All right. Let's put the driver's side wheel back on.
We're not trying to fully torque them yet. I've got the wheels on, they're on all over the car. It's time to lower the car down and tighten everything up with our torque wrench. We're gonna punch up 80 foot pounds. Got 80 on the dot right there. All right, that's done. Now you need to go all around your car and tighten your lug nuts the same way and it will be time for a test drive. But before we go to a test drive, let's go over some basic guidelines. Get in there and pump the brake pedal to make sure that it's nice and firm. It may go to the floor initially, just give it pumps. Don't just go out driving and then realize you don't have brakes. You will also want to burnish your pads. This means you will want to get to about 30 miles an hour and then slow down to zero, or you can go 50 to 20 or 50 to 30, you know, a few times, something like 10, 20 times and uh, just don't panic brake. It's all about braking assertively, but not overly harshly. You're not actually trying to you know, beat them up hard. Uh, definitely wait for them to burnish in to do that. The other consideration is the type of pads that you're gonna put in. I meant to talk about this a little earlier, but I got sidetracked. You want to consider, for most people, ceramic pads. There are semi-metallic that are a little cheaper. I believe that's what the OEM pads are because they dust a lot and they're squeaky. Uh, ceramic are gonna be nice and quiet. Uh, they're going to last longer and they will dust a lot less than semi-metallics. Now, if you're out there racing, drifting, things like that, you may consider semi-metallics again because true race pads, the really high temperature ones, are going to be back to semi-metallic. Now, they're going to make a ton of noise. They're going to dust a ton. Like my Mustang suffers heavily with dusting from the semi-metallic fronts, but they will break the best. They will fade the least. They work really, really well, but that is the high end semi-metallic pads, the racing pads. Now, you may not want to put those on your street car. I've made that mistake before. It's really not fun when you suddenly find yourself with poor braking performance on cold brakes. So I'm going to go test my car out. I'm going to go burnish the pads. You should do the same. But when you have a chance, check out the Amazon links below in the video. Give those a click. I make a small percentage of anything you buy. It doesn't even have to be the same item as in my link. And it helps the channel out so that I can do more of these videos. Furthermore, I would love it if you subscribed and left me a nice comment. I really appreciate all of those and I talk to most of you guys. So I'm testing out the 240 with the new brakes. Before, I couldn't even lock the tires up at all. I just burnished them, I let them cool down. Let's test them out. Much better than before.